Yo. YouTube. Yup. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Look quick live, man. Start doing these in the morning a little bit. While I'm going to take care of some business that I got going on. But, uh, hey, I invite, uh, each and every one of y'all that's on the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Uh, title of this video is Think Like a Mega Carrier. You know what I'm saying? Business fundamentals. Um, uh, when I say think like a mega carrier, a lot of times I say that and I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, what exactly do I mean about think like a mega carrier? Um, to be honest with you, when it comes down to starting this business, what's up, brother? What's up? What's up, man? Hey, when it comes to this business right here, everybody's financial situation different. I say that a lot. So you have to evaluate your own situation. But to be honest with you, if you are becoming an owner operator or you're trying to uh, start your own authority, have your own little whole setup going, or even lease on to a company and put yourself in, in the position of being as owner to control your own LLC while being under another company running, it's some things you really have to understand about how trucking companies are built. Like, running at this stuff just in an arbitrary way is not going to get it done, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it ain't but two ways. And it ain't got to do this set up or nothing right now, what I'm talking about. It ain't but two ways to do this shit, man. You need to do this the right way. Or you can do this shit your way. And experience is the best teacher and the fact that we sit around with all these very, very, very successful, you know what I'm saying, logistic companies and firms, you know what I'm saying, they trucks passing us on a daily basis. They got 500 trucks. They got 300 trucks. They got 1,000 trucks. All of them brand new. They doing lease. They doing all that deal. Man, share that video because I'm going to tell you something about all that deal. That is what establishment does for you. And when I say establishment, it's, it's, it's what you've established. Like I said, the numbers will tell you. But if you go and research any of your major mega cares, I'm talking about any last one of them, Swift, uh, Last Thought, uh, uh, Trans Am Trucking, KLLM, all these people, you're going to get a, 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 a synopsis of their company history. And most of them, eight times out of ten, really nine or ten times out of ten, going to start with a paragraph that says something like, uh, back in 1968, uh, the owner so and so so and so had an original dream to start a trucking company. First thing he did, he started in 1953 with a 1941 uh, such and such a truck, and and continued to grow his business. And as he saying, as they began to notice that the work was a little bit too much work to do, they began to add more trucks. And as they add more trucks, they got another used truck. They got another one. They say they money up. They bought one or two, you know. And then, you know, as the demand for customers increased exponentially for them because they had trucks available, having trucks available, I had them wanting you to have more trucks available. So when you see companies, high shot company, mega carry, trucking company, all that when they start from the ground floor i'm telling you to minimize the risk of going out of it is on a new venture and you don't know what it's gonna do which is all of us when we first start out even if you got some experience you don't know what your business gonna do because you don't know you just don't know so in order low they lease trucks and all this stuff. 
way on down the line because they done saved up money working with their truck that they didn't have a payment on or the payment was so small it didn't mean anything and they were actually able to grow their business at a rate that's productive you know what i'm saying like it's to the point where it didn't like up that one truck it probably didn't take that company a year to actually save a hundred grand you know what I'm saying? And and that's that's when it comes into the meat and potatoes of uh, this this whole trucking game. It ain't got nothing to do with high shining or none of that shit. It's got something to do with straight up trucking, y'all. And one thing you'll realize, you watch a lot of channels and they they people lease trucks and they go out and buy brand new trucks and they I mean all that. That's good based on your situation. But starting from the ground flow, man, I'm telling you what really works. You know what I'm saying? Is to keep cost overhead, cost overruns down. And to be able to see your money. And like I said, situation where they where they buying trucks, they get new trucks and all that. That's after them folks didn't grind, man. You don't grind, you don't shine. These folks put in a whole lot of work and worked the shit out of the first old truck and, and got as many contracts as they could. They actually built their business and then they started to expand. But when I say you think like a mega carrier, you got to go all the way back to the beginning before they was a mega carrier to understand how they became to be a mega carrier. It wasn't just the fact that certain stuff just dropped in their lap and somebody decided to give them a million dollars and they went and bought. They went and bought eight trucks, brand new, fully loaded, day two. Now, nah. now. Nah. Whoever did Trans Am Trucking, they probably ran that one truck for three years and got they bread up to the ceiling because they came with a used truck, you know what I'm saying, that was in very good condition, used truck, that you could see getting some work out of and got to work. But like I say, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that consider, you know what I'm saying, coming out. You know what I'm saying? And, and I ain't saying it's just because it's a new truck or anything like that and that can't nobody afford it and all that. I'm just saying for the average person that's coming out here and really betting the house on all this stuff, the best way to progress is to be able to actually see your money. And that's why I encourage everybody to do what you can. Learn every aspect of this game. You know what I'm saying? You may... You may save fifteen to twenty thousand dollars if you really run it in a year just on a dispatch. You might save fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Don't ask me how I know what that number is because I dispatch. You might save fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to get off gas. Yeah. But at the same time, all this stuff comes into play to making it be uh coming to a fruition that your business will work or it will start to be a parasite on your life to the point where you know things will come up to the point where you realize your money ain't adding up right because you're paying everybody too much money. You know? And with that, everybody's like I said, everybody find that situation different, but I know we got one come and go, and that's come out here and run a check up. And like I said, I started my company with 06 Diagram. I was mechanically inclined and everything, which is cool, but at the end of the day, you really want to be concerned about overhead. It may not be the truck that puts you, you know what I'm saying, over budget or in a situation because it's all about the setup, y'all. Like, not the setup of the truck, the setup of your mindset of what you're really trying to do out here. It's, it's about the setup, for real. And like I say, if you could come out here and just pinpoint a certain amount of money that you're going to automatically make, It'll be cut and dry. Just go buy a new truck, pay it off in three years, give them $1,500 a month, and everything going to be good. But this is an up and down market. So you have to set yourself up. So when you look at it, you're like, okay, my total expenses for the month on this truck is going to be about uh, four grand, maybe. You know, five grand, including diesel. I'm going to run a lot of miles. Yeah. But like I said, that same truck in a different situation. You know what I'm saying? Different year making model of truck. You know what I'm saying? Those operating expenses for the money, including diesel, may only be $2,500, $3,000. So, you know what I'm saying? In the grand scheme of things, in 12 months, 
you'll have an extra twenty four thousand dollars if you can manage to hold on to it in your pocket. That's when you go to the to the dealership or your favorite shop when something happens and you ain't got no word to be crossed with them. You ain't going up in there and they tell you you need nine thousand dollars to fix your truck and you like mm, just fix that and that. Don't fix all that. You know what I'm saying? It don't come up. Like you don't go to the shop sweating bullets when your overhead ain't that high. And I know everybody fit jump in there and be like, man, it's the warranty, the warranty, the warranty, the warranty. That warranty cool, but that no do nigga money. Unless this shit catastrophic and you can figure out how to get somebody to let you off the hook for some of that stuff. Regardless, that no still do the next month. Your truck was in downtime and you lost the revenue to actually pay the truck. Nope. So, you know, warranties are cool, but like I said, a bad warranty you can have it, the one you never had to use. You know what I mean? And that that's cool, but at the end of the day, like I said, limited cost. In the initial point, you can fall to your file once you get out of here a couple of years and get some get some real real experience under your belt and understand that you you can make them. Yeah, but that's that. Like I said, that's when you kind of realize at the end of the year, at the end of the month, every time you get ready to pay your bills, you be like. And I ran 15,000 miles this month. I ran my ass off. But shit, you know, the private county every last one of them miles paid 2,500. I really could have had some money in my pocket and not have to go borrow nothing if I had to just follow the plan of companies that have a thousand trucks. Like, People gotta understand, these folks didn't leverage all them trucks on their credit and all that stuff. That's why they're trying to trick you to come and lease a truck from them so bad. And like I said, it ain't always a bad deal. Some folks got some good lead deal with their company, the mega carriers and all that. But for the most part, them folks just growing a fleet. And if your ass jump out the lease, they send somebody up to school and put them right in your place. They ain't got their ass on there. Them folks on a mission. So you gotta be on a mission. And the mission at hand is to run up a check, not run up a debt. I'm telling you now, fur coming out. It's cool to go brand new. It's cool to do whatever you want to do. It's cool to go run them. It's cool to go buy. It's cool to go lease it and everything. But I just want you to take an opportunity and look for yourself. Do your own research because I ain't going to run y'all no clip. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you what you need to know and I'm going to let you do it to your damn self if that's what you want to do. But at the same time, like I said, cause control. Fixed expensive. They need to be here on your, on your top priority thing. Fixed expensive. Limited variable expensive. To the point where your building can be streamlined. Cause like I said, it's set up. Because this stuff go up and down. To the point where if you come out astronomical on bills and you just so happen to come out during a good moment and you, and you make money for three, four months. And it's all good. You see it's coming in like that. And you think that goes on like that forever. And you start jacking off money. And the rates fall. Your bill's still the same. Yo, I mean, your bill's going to still be the same. So, like I said, you got to set yourself up to be able to ride out. Up and the down. And when you up and you know you up, you need to put that money up. You need to put that money up. And if you're a sole proprietorship. Uh, and you do some separate uh, taxes on your personal side. Pay yourself. Do whatever you got to do. But at the same time, put that money up, man. Let that money stay where it's at. Because in the long run, cash you can. Banks are good. Loans help out. But you can't run your business. Listen to me. You can't run your business with other people's money and maintain control. To a point where you have to bust a move. You have to probably sell some shit or do something. You have to bust a move. Because one thing about it, when it ain't your money, you can't do what you want to do with it. So it's certain certain stipulations of things you really can't just do. You know what I'm saying? Unless, you know, it's in a certain way. You got to have a paper trail on certain stuff, yada, yada, yada. I can see some 30-inch floater right now. If I did what I want and they sitting on somebody's car, I can go cash them out right now. I go get a 30-inch floater straight off the side of somebody's car, cash money. Okay, my money. I do what I want to do. It it, man, still like that ain't important, but I'm just saying in business, it is critical. 
because your petting score could be way high. You could be able to go get it, go get in, in anything you wanted. Your 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 pedic and your your experience on your person, all that stuff. In fact, it might be sky high. You know what I'm saying? And you could go get everything. But at the end of the day, I call it credit rich and cash poor. You know, I appreciate that, Paul. And real talk, you know what I'm saying? You could be cash rich. I mean, my bad, scratch that. You could be credit rich and cash poor. And you'll find yourself living to support the minimum payments and hope that somebody over the course of time, you can hit a link, pay somebody off, and somebody else will extend you some more credit because you'll actually paint yourself in a corner credit-wise. And you don't want to do that. You want to save your credit for things that matter. Listen to me. And Ben, you want to save borrowing, especially for 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 basic operations of the business. If you got to do some borrowing to keep the business basic operating, I ain't talking about expand nothing. Because really be honest with you, if you got to borrow money to expand, you know what I'm saying, it's not saying that you 100% weren't ready, but really you weren't ready. You know what I'm saying? But the customer demand or what you thought in your head might say, hey, let's just expand. And I do that. But if you got to go seriously actually borrow all the money it takes to make that thing come true, you really work for them. On God, man. You know what I'm saying? You no longer drive that truck for you. You drive that truck for Bank of America. You drive that truck for Chase. You drive that truck for Region. You drive that truck for Truck Mark and Renaissance and all them local banks of credit you you fucking with. What's up, brother? Yeah, golden nugget for real for man. But like I said, at the end of the day, I make concern in starting to be in the coming out here, even being a driver, is maintaining much control of your situation as possible. Even if you're a driver, don't just jump on the first thing smoking, man. You know what I'm saying? Look around, see who said what, who paying what percentage. Who paying what a mile? What they talking about? And I'ma put you up on this. I pay. I pay my driver empty and loaded. They don't move that truck for free. Period. If you ever drove for me, you click the like button on here, cause you know I ain't lying. I don't give a damn. You load it empty. You made money. And get what? Get one thing about it. You got to keep this stuff where you got driver retention and things like that. You compensate people for the work they do. But at the end of the day, that's later. That's later. Hey man, hey, what's up, Ch hey Chicago Kane, man, hey, hey I'll be, I'm putting that video together. Hey man, see, this is shit I be talking about. One of my owner operators on the line right now. This up, man. Hey, it's a real good guy, y'all. This dude right here, listen to me now. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him too because I did the shit that you know what I'm saying that we is stealing in a motherfucker over here, no middle pride. Man, we some shocked. Like I told you, hey, if you, if anywhere I mean, <laughs> I might slip by you. Because one thing, hey, I had an old operator yesterday, started out, got him a load, <laughs> that motherfucker with four dollars a mile, sat there, Got there. I'm going to let him tell the story, but I'm going to give you a synopsis. Sat there, got there, and before he left for the day, that price had went up to $1,600. My homeboy out there run $6 by 37 cent a mile on, on, on some shit that don't take three hours, four hours. What? Maybe five. I think it was four and a half hours to drive across there for $1,600 one way. No hand, man. No over dimension. No oversight. No permit. Motherfucker. Hey, I like that. Hey, Chicago. Hey, I, I'm going to put that video together. I'm going to introduce it to you, man. Y'all going to have to go check out his channel, man. Chicago Kane. Hey, hey, all I can say is, I ain't going to say you talk about the best. I can say it like this, though. The boy up on it. He understand and he gets it. Yeah, like I said, he really gets it. You know what I mean? 
Hey, Raymond, man, Raymond, that super chat, man, get in there, Raymond Kelly. Raymond Kelly, you stay doing that. Man, I don't know what it is, man. Next time, hey, brothers on the haven, next time we do a live, I got, make sure you on the live, Raymond. Cause hey, brothers on me, I just like that, bro, and appreciate that, man. That's a nice super chat right there, a little sticker. Hey, one thing about it, though, like I said, bro, get it. Bro, gets it. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, cost control. Cost control. He even gets it. Cost control. Because one thing about it, if you if you not mechanically inclined, you don't want no major headaches. I see the reason where you go buy a truck. Still can't see the reason you will rent one, but at the end of the day, that to each his own. But at the same time, controlling. Hey man, hey, I'll most definitely hit you up when I come back through Dallas Fort Worth area. For real though, man. I just been on some business, man, for the last few weeks, man. I've been meeting with a lot of people. I've been meeting with some 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 investors that ain't the bank. It folk that believe it to the point where I ain't got no sale pitch and spiel for you. You just see the result and feel like you want to be a part of it. And get what well, I got some I got some investment plans and been doing it. I'm talking. About, I've been had investors for over a year. Shout out to my investors and shout out to the fact that y'all motherfucker made money. Fucking with the haven, y'all made money, and that was good, man. On some big ass returns, I'm talking some shit. Four hundred one k CD money market annuity. They can't fuck with it. And it guaranteed money. They say you should make guarantees on investment because I always risk the loss. Bitch, I'm betting on me. And I got so many redundancies, so many contingencies in place to the point where everybody gonna get their money. Don't worry about that. Cause I started with more money than I ever needed. Once I started adding people on and everything like that, as soon as I had Chicago Kane on, I had five bands sitting over on the side. I'm going to do a video. I had five bands sitting on the side just for his paycheck for a month just because I know he going to come out, go a little slow. But at the same time, if anything come up, he got a load on, he can't get it off. And I'm thinking, man, I believe bro need his money. I I'm going to send it to him. He going to get it. He going to get paid before time. Damn near every time. It don't matter. And that way you got to set it up. You got to be set in concrete where this shit don't bother you. When it's time to throw these trucks and trailers in the shop, you ain't sweating bullet because you able to hold on to some money. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I said a bunch of times I spent my money. I spent $14,000 on this truck. I'm riding in now. You know what I'm saying? In the midst of paying a truck note. I just paid this truck out last month. You know what I'm saying? The Mr. Pan the truck, no insurance, all that. I got fourteen thousand dollar bill. That truck ain't making no money. You need to have your money to go. You need to have your shit to go. And I ain't talking about no credit cards and all that old stuff. You need to have some cash. For real, for real. And that's that's my biggest thing. You know, think like a mega carrier. But I ain't saying come out here and and just run a truck. Because big areas lease trucks. I ain't saying come out here and buy a brand new truck. If that's what you want to do, do it. If it suits you. But at the same time, I'm not saying anything like that. What I'm saying is, when you evaluate your situation, keep them costs in check, know your budget, and plan for the worst. If if rates go in the tank, if COVID-19, if, if. I'm most definitely tell you, man. Yeah, I'm riding down the highway in our service here. But I'm telling you, every so often, probably every five, six months. Now, I don't think it's going to happen right now for a while. That's a little tidbit, too. If you're going to do what you're going to do, I got some $40 consultation. I'd have talked them all the way down through the whole thing. They got the equipment there. Now, y'all get out of the house and go, on, go get some money while this shit doing what they're doing. Because they ain't going to do what they're doing right now for ever. But like I said, about every five, six months, four, five months, the bottom drops out of this shit, y'all. I mean, nobody really talk about it, especially the spot market. Like, every once in a while, these folks get their ass on their shoulders and these rates go, Pfft. I'm talking about that why I compound freight and that why I compound these parcels and different stuff like that because it don't matter what the rate do. I'm, I'm still make money. It don't matter. They can tell me I can take that whole load for $3 a mile a day. And it's a half a trailer. I'm going to take it and, and put something with it. And they can tell me tomorrow, take that, that same load, goddamn $1.25 a mile, and I'm going to put something with it. I'm still going to buy them out around $2, $3. I'm still satisfied. I made money. I can't do what I came to do. 
I ain't tripping on it because that's what you got to have in place. You got to have systems in place and your stuff lined up to where even in the worst of times, you ain't sweating this shit and just do what it do and come out or make some or make a little something, yada, 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 and, and, and it's going to be okay because you're not drowning in debt. You're not drowning on the payments that are, are, are hitting you and it seems like 30 days coming faster than it ever came in history. You're like, damn, it's just, just paid it. Well, yeah, you, you when you're running, you lose track of time. So before you know it, a week to pass, you're living your life a week at a time, another week to pass, another week to pass, another week to pass. And like I said, it's time to pay it again. And whether you've been running or not, you know what I'm saying, in the time that it was good and saving money, going to be able to, well, really going to show in the fact that, hey, it could be a bad month. Right before your insurance renewal, and you know it's gonna be a lot, a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Why you weren't saving the whole year? Why you ain't put that five cent a mile? I was talking about in that video. I wish I put a link right there, but I, I'm live. I can't do that. But at the same time, them ten, five, ten cents a mile. You know what I'm saying? It added up. But like I said, think like a man care. Hey, look at what they do, and look at why they do it. But don't look at the today mega carry. You go back and read up on these people. Read their history. Now, I researched the whole trucking game all the way around. Like, I ain't just looking at no high shot shit. I ain't looking at no dry van, reefer, no, no flatbed. Now, I, I'm looking at trucking. I don't give a damn what they carry. I just want to know how they did what they did. And you know what I'm saying? As you research, you'll be like, hey, man, that. That, that shit sound like it, it work. It shit work. Right? I'm going to be honest with you. This, that's how you build fleets and shit. Yeah, this shit comes from customer demand and real hard work and saving money. And don't nobody want to do it no more. That That's my biggest thing. Don't nobody want to hustle and just save no money. Don't nobody want to grind. Everybody want to say they on the grind all the time. But don't nobody want to really grind and put them $40, $50 up a day, seventy five dollars a day, and just be out here working and not concerned about it, and save your money and let it be there. Don't nobody want to take the time to stay in it a year and a half before they start adding a year before they start adding a lot of people on. Got people in, like I said. You'll feel obligated, man. I do all this stuff, man. I'm talking about people. Well, why not you? Because believe me, people like on the truck, they over there chilling, but they watch it. To the point where after about six, seven months, you stand pulling up loads at the house and parking trailers and you mess around it. Gives to you like, man, you know, can I get into this? You know, you're going to have to have some add on operators and drivers and stuff like that is a really smart thing to do. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, that's one of them things. My boy here is saying, damn, Bridge, hey, baby. Hey, two loads new. Hey, y'all run it up, yo. Run it up, man. Damn, Bridge, hey, man. I love y'all. Come get what? Y'all been around since the beginning. I'm talking about when it went by like four subscribers. Y'all was around here. And we done had some good times. I done watch y'all progress. And we done had a whole lot of back and forth over the time with the planning and the setups and the customs, all type of stuff, man. And I want to let y'all know I am most definitely, supremely proud of you guys, uh, what y'all done able to accomplish. And get what, y'all? They, they expanding and doing some more shit, adding stuff to the fleet. Got a big rig going up in there. It look like they might be watching the Haven. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I might be watching the Haven. Cause we try to get a check. I ain't got my ass on how this shit look. And y'all know it. I don't care how it look. That 2006 diorama look crazy. When I put it up with that lab with eleven thousand on the trailer and a single wheel on the on the 2006 diorama, it looked like a fifteen hundred. I don't give a damn how it look. Does it pull? Will it turn? Will it stop? Will it get me there safely? Will it do the same thing your 2020 would do? Yep. I had my ass on how it look. 
Hey, I had folk pulling up beside me. Man, I'm talking about, I, hey, pulling up beside me every other week. Brand new shit out the line. They, oh, I'm talking about big boy Dooley, 5500s, all type of shit. Cranking up their hot shot game. And one thing I'm going to tell you, that shit is detrimental. Crank it up like that if you want to. You need to have an extremely long bankroll, and I am not. I am not. I'm, I am not trading control over my company to be working for the bank. I ain't even want to work for the bank. I ain't got no 401k through them folk. They ain't going to give me shit when the business go down or succeed or nothing. It's to the point where they ain't got shit for me, but yet I'm out here working for them because I was impatient and started before my money was in order. Got my credit right now that in order. You got to do this stuff, y'all. Think like a med carry now. Set yourself up to the point where, like I said, new truck, old truck, that ain't the debate. That ain't the debate. The debate is financial situation. Man, Dale Pretty J, $1,000 staying up. I've been screaming a $1,000 since. Since I started the channel, that's the number of that, man. Y- See, y'all, well, y'all, hey, man, y'all gonna fuck around and get rich. And y'all some good people, y'all deserve it. But y'all gonna fuck around and get rich fucking with me. I promise you, that, that little shit makes so much of a difference, man. I'm so proud of y'all. Yeah, they doing it. And about 20 more doing it the same way. They want our consultation. Ain't no game, man, back and forth. When I tell you something, you can stand on it, man. Y'all deserve everything y'all getting there, Pritch, eh? And for real, though, I'm proud of y'all, man. But y'all been there from the beginning, man. We had some real personable, personal-type conversations and everything, man. I do that with Ram 1500. I saw that. I saw that, Raymond Kelly. You a hustler, man. You you done found your niche. You got in there. Get that money. It's all about finding your niche. It don't matter what kind of stuff it is. As long as your equipment men do the job in doing safely and, and you can do it without killing the truck, do that. That's why I don't just really rock with CDL eyesight. I'm like, no, nah, CDL, when you get through with that, you got your feet wet, you understand the game, everything going on, you made some good money. Go buy a big red bull, you fought 8000 I'm going to keep talking about that eight band we made over there from Florida to Alabama and back the other way. I'm going to keep on talking about that motherfucker for a minute. One day work. Pick up in the morning, dropped off on the e in, in, in the midday. Of the evening, picked up and dropped the other one off at nine o'clock at night, back where you started from. Eight bad. Sell my out. Sell my out, man. That shit ain't no joke. It's a real live money out here. High shot, big truck, big rig, reefle, flatbed, tanker. It ain't about what you pull it. Man, you be out there balling like a motherfucker. Man, that shit ain't nothing. And people that make more money than they'll do with a tank. It's about how percentage you side and leasing on to a company like that and uh, on the operator. It's all about deduction. It's a cost control. In every aspect of their business, it's about cost control. Even when you see the med carry come out and they got a fleet of brand new trucks and you like, damn, that's a lot of money. It's in budget. Shit in budget. And if they can, they're going to put you in it and let you pay for it for them. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's one of them things. But Yeah, and like I said, be encouraged and understand that there is a method to all this madness that goes on. And one of the best things you can do for the longevity of your company, even in your lending later on, is to show that you're a hustler and you on the grind all the time. That's what they want to see. They don't smile upon people that basically came out on a loan or basically funding they being in wood alone because they're looking at you as you come to get this next loan, like why you need some more money. And it's all this damn money in trucking. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And they do loss reports and all that shit. That's why I said people, people say a lot of shit, but you can't tell this shit to nobody unless they're a damn fool. You know what I'm saying? Because when a bank get ready to loan you some money, it's a process. I'm talking, it's a real process. 
You need loss run reports and all type of stuff, which you can provide. But when they get through analyzing that shit, if you've been bullshitting, there ain't no way to hide it. You can fudge the numbers. You can pay people out. out, out you can pay people salaries that they really don't get. You know what I'm saying? I know people right now paying their paying they wife, working for them every damn day, uh, paying them good damn money every week, taking it off to make it look like these people got a real income and they can turn around and flip that and, and get some joint credit and get some more money because you already motherfucking broke. You know what I'm saying? And see, that's the, that's, that's the shit that's going to kick you in your ass. Like, I know a lot of people that do that. I don't do that because really it's circulating the same money and tax wise, you bullshit. So, so you, if your wife don't really work for you, she ain't gonna be really keeping the money and, and utilizing it for herself. And you turn around, and write a check, and put it in the bank, and turn around and write a check and put it back in your bank. That ain't shit. That ain't shit. That ain't shit. I'm gonna say it again. That ain't shit. You can fool some of the people some of the time. Can't fool all the people all the time, player. And that real. I know folks that you actually living like that, but you in double debt. You don't even know it. Because guess what? What they basing they lending off of and what you're saying they're coming in and being made, it ain't being made. It being recycled. It being circulated back around and you actually paying a bill with that money to the point where this shit real, man. Don't set yourself up on no slick shit. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. And think about these moves before you make them now. For real. Like, this should have had you to the point where your debt to income ratio will be so lopsided. In the midst of the bank thinking that your debt to income ratio pretty good. That puts you in a situation to go in foreclosure, bankruptcy, not be able to support all this because you robbing Peter to pay Paul. Can't do it. Just put the money up, be for real with yourself. Don't be nobody you ain't, man. Just grind this shit, do it at your pace. What will be, will be. You see more room for improvement. You improve. The more you improve, the more your money going to go up. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of things involved in this aspect of just being and where you really want to think like a mega character. For real. You really want to think like these people when they were on the grind all the time. Now they just running. It's automatic. They got contracts and shit lasting to 2025 and all that old type of stuff right there. It's automatic now. But it didn't begin like that. So like I said, take the opportunity. Go go Google some of these companies that you see out here with a thousand trucks and read their backstory. More than likely, they're going to have a backstory up there. And I'll tell you, like I said in the first beginning of the video, it's going to pretty much read every time the same. Back in 1954, we started out with one old truck in a dream. Uh, we, 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 we sent, we serviced everybody in the area. We went and found every custom we could find until the, to the point where, hey, hey, the demand was too much. We had to go get a second truck. The second truck, because it, it needed to be more reliable and most of for the customer, yada, 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 we got a newer truck or a new truck. But that first truck that made us all that money, we still run it. It's in a museum right now. I'm talking about they got this shit on the showroom floor at their main terminal. Because that truck made them be with out of day. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that, you gotta look at where it started, not what it is now. And that'll show you that even the best got crawl for their walk, man. You know, and crawling sometimes mean mean being for real with yourself. I'm talking about really for real with yourself about your personal financial situation, personal credit situation, establishing your business credit. I, you know, I do a lot of that on, on my one-on-one -on -one consultations, you know what I'm saying? I do a lot about, you know, being the credit with people that are at that juncture in business to the point where I got damn good being the credit. Yeah, you got to sacrifice to build a foundation. I got damn good being the credit. I got a good ad pet exco. Do I use that shit? For trade line. Sure do. For trade line. But in the, in the, in the, in the case of all hell breaking loose, break glad, jump ship, I yada yada yada. Get what? I'm just gonna keep it 100 with you. <coughs> yeah, by the time something go belly up, let's just say a year from now, shit go belly up. And and okay, I basically now be real talk. Basically, I've been running this business off cash for like the last two and a half, three years. 
for real, basically straight on cash and let the trucks pay for everything and put money in your pocket. That's how you do that. But anyway, let's just say I'm running all cash and I'm basically debt free, but I got all this business credit now. And, and I see, like Seller done and all the other folks see that, hey, man, this shit ain't going right. It ain't going to be right. Get what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing they did. I'm going to go get all that money. And I'm going to send out a memo and say, we ain't doing this no more. And I'm going to the D Dominican Republic. They're going to have to come get me. That's how that go. That's what they did. See, don't nobody want to talk about that. See, that's the from the, from the one-man truck, one little truck, all the way to I just grabbed $60 million from all these lenders, bought a few trucks to make it look legit, and ran off with the rest of the money. Now, I ain't going to run off, but at the same time, that's a thing. Now, it's a thing. Like I said, when I said things like a Medicare, you got to research these people back from they from they existed, they in session, all the way up to what they doing now. And then look at the people that did the same thing and ran into a brick wall sooner or later with bad financial management. And they end up basically copping out, taking the money and running. Man, hey, Victory Lap Transport. Von Richard, hey man, what's up? Good to see y'all this morning, man. But like I said, I've been on for a while. I'm riding up here back, back to my hometown for shit, for shiggy dig with some of my partners on some more shit. We talking about some business. It's money circulating around them motherfuckers. I don't know what they told you, but it's a gang good out here. And get what they want to fuck with me. So get what we fucking around. That's what I'm finna do. I'm finna go do my due diligence on some other thing that I got put in play. Then shit, what the my, I think I'm gonna run out to San Antonio, man. I'm gonna run out to San Antonio and peep back at this other truck and we, we massaging some things and get some things lined up to the point where that that truck right there, and I ain't gonna spoil it for you, but I paid, well, we paid less than $20,000 for that truck, man. And, uh, when I do a showcase on that truck, y'all gon' y'all ain't gonna lie. It ain't the cutest. I don't give a fuck how this shit look. But boy, man, when I tell you that truck got a heart of gold, I'm talking about ain't, ain't no man, it just Yeah. And I'm hey, and I'm gonna tell you like this. What's up, Nikolai? Uh, uh, Nicholas, what's up, Nicholas? Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all there too. That truck finna make so much money that it's pathetic. I got some jobs lined up for it, and I ain't even put it on the road yet. That what you do. But at the same time, that truck finna make so much money, y'all. And just, in, I'm telling you now, in the grand scheme thing, I still say it ain't but two way to do that, man. Go on, hey, nah, CDL, look, I don't get you a big rig. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand on what, what I say. Because I already know what worked. And I already did the math on this shit to the point where in the worst time. Up, y'all. I'm telling you. It's an in frame on it. I ain't no uh 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 three man uh uh head on it and they did the work, put new liners in it, they ain't do no out of frame rebuild or none of that. This is a thirty thirty eight thousand mile Detroit. Crate engine. I'm talking about it been in a 30,000 mile documented, running like a son of a bitch. I'm talking about pulling his ass off, brought it out South Florida, and, 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 and that motherfucker is ready to go. We get everything up for it, ready to go. But at the same time, like I said, I'm going to slide out there to San Antonio tomorrow and peep at that. I might take y'all with me to do a little live on it, whatever. But like I said, man, you got to think about how these people multiply like they multiply. They didn't throw money at the problem. They had a problem. They had to serve more customers. They didn't throw money at the problem. They invested money in the problem. And the only way you can really invest money in anything is if you got the money. You can't invest somebody else's money. They gave you the money. You can use it. Man, you invest somebody else's money in some shit and they go bail up. You lose your money. You still got a debt. That debt going to stay. Well, that shit make money or not. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, with everything, it's a it's a it's a order operation. You know what I'm saying? With everything you do, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I don't always say my way the only way, but I will say it ain't but a couple ways to do this shit the way you really gonna see some daylight. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I got partners in 18 wheeler that don't make what I make. I got partners in 18 wheeler that make double what I make. They got partners in, in, in non CDL or CDL high shot don't make what I make. And then got guys in non CDL, CDL high shot make way more than I make. But at the end of the day, it's about profit percentage. Overhead. They might make $10,000 more than me in a month. They might do that. But where your money going? Who you really out there getting them 10 extra bands to? Is the repair guy? I ain't got no repair bill like that. You know what I'm saying? When it come up, ain't no doubt it up to this shit. But when shit come up, second place, I'm looking into the dealership. First place, I'm looking at my own damn garage. I ain't got my ass on no mate. That money pay they'll pay the truck out early and showing up see you money. But the quicker you can get away from up under your, your initial startup cost and debt, better off you gonna be now. And y'all go back through the videos. I know it's a long time ago. But yeah, that first truck, that first truck got paid off in basically 14 to 16 weeks after purchase. Strictly running low. Because I ain't pay myself. Because guess what? I already work for me. At the point in time while paying that truck, no. I was partially working for the bank. I don't work for them folks. I ain't punch no clock for now, motherfucker. I'm, I'm sorry. I had a lucrative offer like two weeks ago. Listen to me good now. I had a lucrative offer where Like I said, I had a lucrative opportunity, uh, and I'm talking. About, I had to think about this shit. I'm talking. About, it was it was a thought. I had a person come to me and say, "Hey man, I need you this bad." Me stay on, but at the same time, like I said, I'll tell y'all about it though. It's a, a pretty good opportunity, man. I'm talking about anybody I know that wasn't doing what I'm doing, like I'm doing it with a I'm talking about with a straight, I'm talking about being over there driving right now. Because what the deal was, I drive if no expenses of that because I'm basically be a driver and then spend myself and basically his two other trucks while driving a truck and he was like i pay you you know basically three grand a week guaranteed no matter what i'm gonna give you three grand a week that's 12 grand a month y'all sometimes 15 grand a month but and and that's good money. i'm talking about that's damn good money somebody want that job real real bad but at the same time i had to sit there and think about it i had to think about this shit about three and a half days because i like i could basically keep my company still running like i do you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I could be over there and not buy no diesel, not worry about no headaches, worry about nothing, be a driver. You know what I'm saying? And make a gang of money. Basically, as a driver, you three grand a week, shit. Old people driving big rigs ain't make three grand a week as a driver. But when you look at what it is and what it really entails, it to the point where now you're a dispatch service on top of a driver. I do that every day anyway. But it's to the point where now you're a dispatch service you got to work out a different number. You got to work out a number on the percentage of these loads. Hell, if I'm dispatched, I want 10% off the load. I'm dispatched for me because that's not, that not my company, not my truck. To the point where over the course of a week, if a person got three trucks and, and you dispatch three trucks over the course of a week, and let's just say you charge 10%, 10% of 
and everybody go out there and make five five uh five thousand dollars. See your percentage over there gonna be fifteen hundred for the week, and I'm gonna drive a whole week for fifteen hundred. And I'm gonna move at the pace I normally move, so this truck gonna do more than what it normally do. Or I keep doing what I do and profit more than twelve thousand dollars a month. Do the fuck I want to do. Don't punch nobody clock. Ain't got to worry about where you trying to see me go because you see this low pay a lot and you really want it. I don't give a fuck. I do what I want to do. And that and that what it boiled down to. If you're going to come big on, you're doing this stuff to make a profit and maintain control. When it gets to the point where you can't maintain control, making a profit ain't making a profit. Because get what? As you go transition back from an owner, uh, owner operator, back to a drive, you just took yourself out of certain uh, out of tax category of an owner so now you're an employee you respond for all them taxes so let's just say you made three grand a week every week for 50 weeks that's hundred fifty thousand dollars if i make three grand a week for 50 week it ain't gonna really be a hundred fifty thousand because i got expensive but i'm gonna write them out and i much rather spend the money but how i want to spend the money write this shit off on my bill and then let this shit be beneficial for me in a tax way than to come out actually making $150,000 and owing them and owing them 30. I ain't getting nobody $30,000 for a goddamn thing. i just be honest with you. I really want their money now. So when you get to, get to think about deals and stuff, just think about what's going to happen at the end of the year with these deals and make sure they're ducks in a row because it gets sticky. That's a good, that's a good thought. But at the end of the day, you might make a hundred and fifty thousand, but you ain't gonna take maybe a hundred home. You know what I'm saying? And you more definitely gonna lose control of where you able to go and what you able to do every day, even dispatch yourself. Cause you could dispatch yourself in a tight area and he feel like he wants you to run loan. Cause he wants some long run money. Well, get what? He the boss. You don't have to get out of run loan. You have to do some stuff. Man, I ain't been nowhere really, really, really far in like two months. Real talk. I, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, on on another note, that thing like like with, with Toe Pigs or whatever, it ain't no type of rivalry or no type of animosity. It's all about, you know, people do things differently, man. And I'm just on some average person shit, man. I, I'm I'm be honest with you. I ain't saying that he ain't, but I'm just on some average person. I ain't got a lot of money. I really ain't got no major financial backers. I got to work a year or two, you know, just to put myself in a position to come out. And you really don't want to come out before you're ready because you set yourself up to have a very, very stressful year. And you know what I'm saying? Money's going to always be a concern. And it just shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't be like that, man. And, you know, like I say, it's just some regular people stuff I'm doing. Man, I ain't never had shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, man, well, I'm going to go live later on today in, in my hometown. I'm going to let y'all show y'all where I came from, man. This shit ain't pretty. It ain't beautiful. It ain't picturesque. And the damn show ain't safe. So, you know what I'm saying? When it gets to the point where, you know, everybody got the way of, they way of doing it. Everybody got their way of seeing it. Everybody got their own situation. But at the end of the day, success lies in what work. And what proving to work. Why would I go reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already rolling? I ain't got I, ain't, I just I ain't got time or money to fuck off reinventing the wheel when we know what work. If I know what work, I'm going with that. Any modification need to be made in there, you know what I'm saying, go in there. But I'm saying, one thing you can't do, especially when you start the business, sometimes, it talk to people that are here in the business, and we starting off here. Now, we down here, we down here, and they way up here in the business. Sometimes, them folks act like they can't remember when they ain't had shit. And I ain't talking about no YouTube, I'm talking about just people in real life. If you see people that sometimes, you know, they, they, you have to really dig for that origin of what, what really happened and all that. There, you got to really dig because 
at a certain point in time, some people get to the point where they don't even want to think about that no more. Just, just, just notice that Swift got 2,000 trucks right now. Don't remember that Swift had a 1949 Ford uh, to do whatever they need to do. Don't think about that. Just see these 2,000 trucks. And that way you got to just really stop and be like, hey, man, this stuff is, 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 is serious. What would the regular guy do? And that's why that that's that's why I rock this channel because like spouting off prices and spouting off you know parts and things like that. I mean we could do that, but at the end of the day, that's a progression, that's some money, and that's that's something that you know I give you the basic stuff that you need to succeed. All the extra frills and extra stuff that you might perhaps want to do along the way, that's completely up to you. But at the end of the day. I just want to give you the fundamental because one thing about the fundamental, it don't matter if you're playing football, basketball, baseball, riding a bike, writing, writing a letter, composing a song, fundamental is going to take you through. So, like I said, I'm going to get out of here, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you out with me one day, man. I'm, I'm just going to go around, I'm going to do me a video uh, yeah, in, in, in the old spot, in the old hood with a big old pistol. You can believe that shit. But uh, at the same time, hell, yeah, I'm going to do y'all one. Then let y'all know there's some that I ain't don't know if I could do it, you could do it, shit, because y'all ain't me and I ain't y'all. But at the end of the day, I'm going to show y'all, man. Show y'all. Y'all come walk through some of these just grass fields and shit. Oh, man, dead animals, dirty diapers, shit, couches, man. If I, hey, it real. So, you know what I'm mean? saying? Like I said, it ain't about the flash and the dad. It's about that cash. For real. Having some credit is imperative. Knowing when to use your credit is vital. It's vital. So, just know that. Know that. Know that. Know that. I'm peacing out with y'all, man. It been good. It been good. You know what I'm saying? Early in the morning, I hope Somebody might have got a little tidbit out of it, you know, help you on your way. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I ain't never no slick animosity or nothing like that with me, with nobody. I love people, man. I love everybody. I ain't going to let you fuck over me, but I love everybody, man. Until you show me different, you know what I'm saying? I'm respecting everybody the same. You know what I'm saying? Until you show me you ain't worthy of being respected or you, you're a disrespectful person, we 1,000. I ain't got no problem with nobody. You know, it's just sometimes I like to spread things on this channel that, you know, it may actually seem like it, you know what I'm saying? But I deal with a lot of people, y'all. I deal with a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And I'm talking about YouTube-wise, that's cool. But I'm talking about real fucking life. This, I ain't, man, y'all know I ain't got my ass on YouTube. Second man in the game on blast and we ain't, I ain't no bullshit. I'm in my home state showing up, man. I'm a clown. I'm an a donkey, man, because I know I ain't bothering nobody. You fuck with me, I'm going to give you 110%. And that's on my mom. For real, I'm going to give your ass 110%. But it's like, like I said, I ain't got no problem with nobody. YouTube wide, real life, or none of that shit. I always did square up being the kid 1,000. I ain't bullshit. And y'all y'all see it in my face. Y'all look at my eyes and know one thing. It's the real right here. I don't know what they told you. But at the same time, I'm going to ease on up here, have a little bit more business in my hometown, put some more stuff together. Man, I got, man, it's, it's just a lot of big stuff going on. It's kind of going on at one time. I don't know how I'm going to bring this shit in a video form. It's just a lot of stuff been happening. I don't know how I'm going to explain a lot of these whereabouts or, 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 you know, the fact that I ain't been nowhere this month. But shit, the company that made money. I, I tell you, I ain't got to be in this truck, man. I can settle for lead. I can sit at home on my ass and make four, five thousand dollars free clear cash every month. I can do that. I can do that. But at the same time, that ain't what I'm trying to do. You ain't going to get where you're going and being mediocre. You ain't going to get where you're going shunning from the work. Man, I'm running into work like, hey, man, like I don't even see it. I'm just run through it. Because one thing about it, it's all about your hustle. And this shit, hey, like I said, the work gonna tell on everybody. You run your mouth. You talk a lot of shit. 
We would say about money, what you spent, who you got some money from, what you borrowed, everything. But at the end of the day, the work going to tell off on you. You can't flash forever, baby. That one thing about it, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And there's some folks you can't fool them, period. Okay. Okay. But at the end of the day, like I said, it ain't about how it look. Fuck how it look. Fuck how it look. What it count like. Fuck how it look. What it count like. We like, what it count like. If it count up right, that's what we doing. We ain't breaking no law, and it count all right. That's what we doing. We doing that two, three, four, but how many times you want to do it? Point same money gone, bitch. And it's real. You know? But like I said, I'm for the end of the line. We'd have been on this chat an hour. Had somebody tell me, had somebody tell me, you know what I'm saying, that that really ain't even a fear. They just be sliding through trying to see what's going on. Tell me, man, ain't nobody going to listen and be up on no uh, hour-long line. Not when you're talking bullshit. Man, these, hey, man, I appreciate y'all. Because guess what? Y'all be, y'all be sticking, with a, sticking with a brother doing technical difficulty around the highway. Going in and out of phone service and everything. Get what? Some of y'all have been on here since the last start. I appreciate y'all. That's why I come on here at some morning and be like, man, I'm by everybody, bro. Some more I come on here in the evening time dealing with the hey. I do shit like that because I appreciate y'all. I want y'all to understand and know that I appreciate y'all too because it ain't about the money. I just like the fact that there is some people that actually want to learn and they will listen and they take what I say with, with validity. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing it, man. It ain't it, and it ain't just started. It ain't just started. I ain't new to this. I ain't grew to this. I ain't flew to this. I'm true to this. So at the same time, it was a lifestyle. So like I said, I appreciate y'all. Cause I, I mean, like I said, I had somebody come in one time. You know, you gotta do, you gotta do short lives. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do. Well, you know, hey, cut that motherfucker out. You feel me? If that motherfucker run over 30 minutes and that's your limit, cut that motherfucker off. That shit ain't for you. If you ain't doing what we doing or you already know the content and you feel like you cool with what you're doing, cut that motherfucker off. For real. I ain't nobody handcuffing nobody. But I'm going to do what I fuck I want to do because I work for me. I don't, man. I ain't making the YouTube channel to be like nobody channel. I ain't got my ass on it. I, they have a lot of subscribers. Get what? At the end of the day, when you get through with your subscriber count and yada, 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 and you move these high shots, especially none CD, I probably still make more money than you. Talk about that shit. The company, the company, my way. For real. You know, so that, that, that what I, that what that boy down to. I ain't got no care for y'all. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about me. And y'all know that. I just want to help somebody. I ain't got no capping for you. I ain't got no man. I just went and did did. Y'all don't give no fuck about what I just went and did to the point where okay, yeah, if I get me 10, 15 thousand subscribers, I might get to doing some life stuff. Just went to the grocery store. Let's hey, take a ride over here with me while I go pick up this right here and get the brakes did on. Man, I've been break man. <laughs> fuck that. You know, unless you're teaching and helping, you know what I'm saying? That videos, educational teaching and helping. I ain't going to too much have shit on me just vlog and you follow my life and do what we do. Life life in the day of a high shot truck driver. Man, y'all life. Find you something to do. And then, you know, you ain't going to have to watch. Motherfucker stumbling, bumbling. You show them going to grocery stores and all that old type shit. Taking you to Home Depot with them and all that. I, I ain't rocking like that. I just I ain't. Y'all just, just stick with them shit. I mean, they got good channels. A lot of people I ain't down talking to nobody. I'm just telling you that's what I ain't doing. So like I told y'all about them goddamn webinar. Y'all won't fuck with me? Cash up. Dollar sign. J-B-U-T-L-E-R-357. It's your five dollar consultation, which like I said, them motherfuckers is finna go up. They finna go up. If you are ready to participate, your price will remain the same. But if you add be new... Starting, I think, man, I ain't gonna do it till the first. But the first of the month, ah, oh, them motherfuckers be seventy five dollars for real.
Oh yeah, and I'm I'm gonna leave y'all with this. I'm gonna leave y'all with this. I I, I posted this on my uh community. I'm gonna leave it with y'all. And if you can get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Listen to me. Good thinkers will always be in demand. People that know how will always have a job. But people that know why always be the boss. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that. This shit about execution. It's about execution now. One more time. In case you missed it. I might not be talking fast. You just might be listening slow. But remember this. Good thinkers. People that can really use their mind. They always gonna be in demand. For real. Forever. We always need people that can use their mind. And people that know how, they'll forever have a job. But people that know why those people are in place and why they are doing what they're doing, why, why, why things are the way they are, gonna always be the fault. Remember that. And I'm out of here. Peace. I'll just, hey, like I say, it don't get no more cutting dry than this, baby.